all the years that I've been preaching, only a few, very, very few times that uh, I have done this. But uh, trust the Lord will help us. Uh, and uh, we'll see. You can be turning to Hebrews chapter 11. I'm preaching by request tonight. Y'all get requests to sing songs? You, y'all get requests to sing songs? Scared a cat, you won't even raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, y'all get requests to sing songs. Well, it's not often, but uh, I got a request to preach this message from several different people. And uh, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, I, I have preached this here, but it's been several years ago. Boy, y'all, some of y'all are looking at me awful funny. I don't know whether it's a good look or a bad look, but uh, you're just, you can't wait, can you? (laughs) All right, Hebrews chapter 11, and we want to start at verse 8. Amen. Amen. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, waited ten years. Huh? Obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him, of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Verse 13, These all died in the faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such thing declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of the country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he hath prepared for them a city. Praise God. You may be seated. Amen. I'm so glad because I am not a citizen of this world, but a citizen of a heavenly country. Amen. And uh, I don't know... uh, what your desires and ambitions in this life is, but my ambition is to make it to heaven. That's the only thing that's worthwhile going through this life. And uh, a lot of folks have uh, uh, come to me recently, and I thought everybody, I thought everybody had heard this message, but evidently some haven't. So here goes tonight. Uh, I want to talk to you about going home. <clears throat> Amen. And uh, we will probably give you some uh, <clears throat> lessons in homing pigeons tonight. <clears throat> and uh, I, uh, you all know, I've fooled with pigeons all my life, and I still have some, and I don't even get chance to fool with them anymore other than just feed them, and I don't always get to do that. Sometimes I have to ask somebody else to do it. But uh, there are several things that I want us to look at tonight, even from these verses, if the Lord will help us. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> Abraham uh, left uh Ur of the Chaldees, and God had told him to go 
to another country. Amen. He was called to go into a new land in Genesis chapter 12 and Genesis chapter 15. He has promised that new land. Amen. And uh, the Bible tells us in the scriptures that we read to you tonight that he went and obeyed God. Uh, come on. <clears throat> Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. And then in verse 9, he said he sojourned in the promised land with his sons, Isaac and Jacob. Jacob was 15 years old, just 15 years old when Abraham died. They dwelled in tents, amen, with his heirs. They looked for a permanent dwelling, a city in heaven, amen, the new Jerusalem. Ah, uh, the capital city of God. Well, I want to tell you tonight, I have dual citizenships. Amen. I am an American by natural birth. Praise God. Amen. But I have citizenship in another world that's called heaven. Amen. And one of these days, I'm going there by the help and grace of God. There are several things that I want us to look at tonight. You, if you're traveling through this world and you're going to make heaven, you cannot afford to be sidetracked by the pleasures of this world. Amen. You have to keep your eyes set on the eternal goal. Amen. That, that life here is short at its longest. Amen. And uh, we must understand that we are our strangers and we are pilgrims. We didn't come to stay in this world very long. Amen. The Lord's coming. Praise God. And we want to hear Him say, well done. Amen. Uh, Y'all understand. I want the Lord to help me tonight. I'm fe beginning to feel a little better. Amen. I want y'all to understand that a racing, homing pigeon is different from all other breeds of, uh, uh, of their kind. Amen. They, uh, uh, they are different from the common birds that you see on silos and in barns. Amen. Their, their character is different. The way they stand is different. Their heads are formed different. They stand erect. Amen. And they are stately. <clears throat> They are a clean bird, and if you'll give them water, fresh water every day, they'll take a bath every day. I wish some folks would do that. Amen. But, ah, amen. They are a clean bird. Those birds that you see on silos and barns, I don't think they ever take a bath. They are dirty, and they, uh, they carry diseases. Amen. But, uh, I have, I have noticed one thing through the years, and sometimes I have had birds that get sick. Amen. And one of the first, uh, uh, brother, I'm, I love to uh, get close to somebody tonight, but one of the first telltale signs of a sick homing pigeon is he starts going off by himself. He, he, he mopes. Come on here. Amen. And he just draws away from the rest of the flock. He'll sit on a perch by itself, or he'll sit on the ground by itself. His feathers will droop. Amen. And that bird's sick, and if he don't get some help, he's going to die. Amen. And I see people in the church like that. One of the first symptoms, come on here, one of the first symptoms is they want to pull a, a, a aloof from the rest of the congregation and be by themselves. Amen. For whatever reason, they, they droop and they complain. Come on here. Amen. The food's not right or the water's too hot or too cold. Amen. They always got some complaint. Amen. But a, a healthy bird stays with a flock. Amen. Their feathers are more uniform. 
Amen. And kept in place than the common birds in the, in the barn. Amen. If they get one feather out of place on their wing or their body anywhere, amen, they will pick at it and pull at it until they get it out or else get it uh, feathered down in the rest of their feathers. Amen. And I want to tell you, great God, I'm feeling better here. Amen. We need to stay together. Amen. Uh, a homing pigeon's uh, nostrils are bigger. Their their body, their head is shaped different. Amen. From the back of their head to the end of their bill is a straight line. Amen. A common bird. Amen. His head goes up like that, and then his bill out. Amen. They are uh, the the homing pigeon. A thoroughbred is very, amen, conscious about his appearance. Y'all stay with me here. They are concerned about how they look. They take care of themselves. Amen. They're, and another thing, help me here, they are faithful to one mate for life. I tell you, when I got saved, I didn't get saved to turn around in five years and go back. Hey man, I got saved and made my way to the altar of prayer. I intended to go to with God. Hey man, till eternity comes. Hey man, help me here. Ah, the, a, a homing pigeon. Hey man, is very careful to take care of their young. Very carefully. Hey Amen. I, I was reading some things today, and, and you may not understand this. Hey Amen. But a, a homing pigeon, hey Amen, feeds their young with milk. Hey Amen. And uh, I know, I know, I know, I understand what y'all y'all are really strange looking at me now. Hey Amen. They do. They feed their that mother and father both feed their young. Amen. They'll go down to the feeding trough and they'll eat whole grain corn. You cannot give home and pigeons cracked corn. It'll make their jaw swell. Hey Amen. You have to feed them whole grain corn and whole wheat. Hey Amen. And a whole maize or milo or Canadian peas. And they'll eat that grain and then they'll go to the watering uh, trough and they'll drink. Hey Amen. And they'll go to a perch somewhere and just sit there momentarily, a few seconds or a minute at the most, and there's a there's a, a, a transaction that God put in them that in their what we would call their crawl, they don't have a crawl, but what we would call their crawl in the lower part of their throat, amen, it gets in there and turns around and directly they'll fly, fly to the nest. <laughs> Amen. And you know, you've, you've probably never seen a little infant baby pigeon that comes out of a, a shell of an egg. Amen. That egg is no bigger around than that. So you can imagine how small that bird is and how tender and sensitive it is when it first hatches out. Amen. That mama or daddy bird, either one, will fly to the edge of that nest and they will, amen, make a grunting sound. And, and that little bird will try to wiggle its head upward, but it can't because it's still so young. And that mama or daddy bird will take that little bird's bill and put it in their bill. Amen. And they will give it milk. You know, it's a strange thing how God works. God made everything just right. Hey man, did you know that when you're first saved, hey man, you can't eat beefsteak spiritually. Hey man, you desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow by it. Hey man, hallelujah. And after a while, come on, are y'all still with me? After a while, hey man, gradually as that little bird begins to grow, hey man, that, that uh, mama or daddy or both, hey man, as they eat the grain and drink the water, it gradually, day by day, will gradually turn to more grain. And after a while, hey man, it's not just grain and milk, but it's all grain. And when that bird comes out of the nest, he's able to eat the grain. And I want to tell you, hey man, there are some people 
people in life that they're about to choke to death on some preaching that I've done. Amen. Because they're not ready for real solid food. Amen. You need some milk. Amen. You need something that will help you grow. Amen. Hey, let me tell you, saints of God. Amen. There are some that the Bible said, amen, that want to teach, but they have need to be taught. Amen. How come? Because they're not grown yet. There is babe. Babes desire the sincere milk of the Word. Amen. That they may grow. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Somebody say amen. I've got to hurry here. Amen. Uh, uh, my wife was uh, saying before church uh, today, said, you better get two or three CDs out there. I'm going to try to condense it to one tonight. Amen. But I want to tell you, amen, newly hatched birds are fed by both mother and father. Listen to me, saints of God. Dear young, amen, people, young parents, listen to me. Your children need to see and hear you pray. They need to see you reading the Bible. Help me here. Amen. You need to teach them children how to pray. Amen. Oh, if we could understand mamas and daddies' importance, amen, in the life of their children and what they learn in the home. I want to tell you, your child cannot learn everything about God in the Bible that they need to know just by going to church twice a week. Amen. They'll learn more in the home by the example that their mom and daddy says than they'll ever learn in the house of God. Amen. Teach them how to pray. How do I teach them to pray? Pray with them. Pray in front of them. Not to be heard by them. Amen. But they need to hear Mama and Daddy call on the name of the Lord. Amen. I remember years ago, I don't know what y'all going to do with this, but here goes. I remember years ago, amen, I, uh, there was a stray bird that came into my flock when I was in Texas. Amen. And it's a pretty bird. I don't know where it come from. It just showed up. Amen. All of my birds at that time, I had had them banded. And uh, amen. I, I had their pedigrees. I knew who was their mom and daddy and grandma and grandpa. And I had their pedigree all straightened out. Amen. I knew who, I knew who belonged to what, uh, uh, uh group, uh, uh, birds, you know. Amen. And I had this stray bird that come to my, uh, loft one day and it was pretty. I mean, it really was a beautiful bird. Amen. It was what we called in those days, we call them a flash. They, they are, were several different colors. Amen. And uh, I think it was, uh, 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 red and, and, and white and had a little blue in it and, hey man, it was really pretty to look at. And I looked at it for a great God, I'm in trouble here tonight. I looked at it for a while and I said, boy, I think I'll just let it stay with the, hey man, the rest of the flock. Let's see what'll happen. I wish I never had, but I did. Amen. And lo and behold, that, that flashy bird was pretty to look at and pretty in appearance. Amen. Amen. And, and one day I noticed that all my birds in my flock had quit laying. Amen. And quit raising young. And, and, and it was a turmoil. There's fighting each other. I'm in trouble here. Amen. They, I mean, they was in a total chaos in that pen. Amen. And I looked one day and I said, I've got to figure this out. I've never had them do that before. Amen. I got to look in, in this stray bird, this beautiful bird, this pretty bird. Go oh, help me here. Hey man, he'd fly up on the roost over here and he'd get to pecking at the bird. Hey man, he'd sit next to on that side. Hey man, and that bird after a while got tired of it and started pecking back. And then he'd peck at the bird on this side. Hey man, and then, come on here. 
Bird got tired of it, and he's pecking back, so he flew, he flies off, and them two's at it. Hey, Amen. And he went to another roost and done the same thing over there. And the first thing you know, there was total chaos in that pen. Hey, Amen. How come? Because there was a common bird in there. Hey, Amen. That was not a thoroughbred. It, come on, come on, y'all stay with me. Hey, Amen. And it was bringing trouble. I want to tell you, we need to keep harmony in the house of God. Hey, Amen. I said we need to keep unity in the house of God. As long as there is unity among the people of God, we'll grow. We'll prosper. We'll bring in new. We'll bring in the young. Hey, Amen. And others will find a refuge in Christ. But you let there be, come on, you let there be confusion and let there be a turmoil. And the first thing you know, nobody wants to pray about sinners. We're only concerned about our own little deal. Amen. This ain't the first time I've preached this, by the way. Hallelujah. And I got to thinking, boy, amen, that's the problem in this. Whoo. How many of y'all remember Brother Benny Sutherland? Y'all remember when he came and preached for us here? Been several years ago now. And I'll never forget it. I don't tell preachers anything when they come to preach for us. Amen. I don't tell them no church problems, nobody's. Amen. As far as they're concerned, everybody loves everybody. Amen. And this has been years ago. And brother, <laughs> amen, brother Benny got to preaching in a big way when, when service. Amen. And he went down, uh, the center aisle as before we ever made an addition here. Amen. He went down the center aisle and started pointing his finger. And he said, you are the problem in this church. Anybody here remember that? Amen. And he'd go down a little further and he'd point at your finger at somebody else and say, you are the problem in this church. Woo! Hey, I want to tell you, hey man, that common bird was the problem. Amen. Don't y'all fall out with me here. But I went in that pen. I caught that common, pretty, beautiful bird. Hey man, I took it outside and I pulled its head off and fed it to the cats. I did, sister. Oh, I'm glad there wasn't no animal rights people there. Praise God. Ah, hey man, I thought my problem was solved and over. But what I didn't realize was, hey man, come on here. That common bird had mated with some of my good birds and their young ones was coming on. Hey man, and they were half breeds. Come on, somebody say amen. They might have looked like, come on, anybody listen to me? They might have looked like the rest of the flock, but they had that old common bird spirit in them. Amen. And after a while, amen, amen, the same thing happened again. And I realized that we had some half-breeds. Hey, we got half-breeds in holiness. Amen. You get to preaching real tight and strong. Amen. Hey, I want to tell you, great God. Hey, man, we got some thoroughbreds, and we want to keep them thoroughbred. Hey, man, sanctified and meet for the master's use. James 4 and 4. Know ye not... That the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Amen. Paul said you cannot sit at the table of the Lord and the table of devils too. You cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of the enemy too. Hey, hey, hey. We've got to have some folks that are sold out, lock, stuck, and barrel to serve the Lord. Uh, anybody listen to me now? Say amen. amen. I remember I read some years ago. You might get that other CD out, brother. Some years ago I read a little deal about a, a daddy and his daughter. She's a young teenager. And... Uh, 
she asked her daddy one day, uh, could she go to a certain place? And uh, it was not a real bad place, but it was not conduce- conducive to real Christian character. And daddy said, no, you can't. There are sometimes folks need to tell their children no. And the daughter, being a teenager that she was, she said, why? Some of my church friends are going. I'm going to lose y'all here. Daddy went over to the stove and uh, he pulled up a, a dead coal. Amen. And that was in that uh, stove and held it out to her. And he said to her, take this. And she said, no, Daddy. And Daddy said, why? It won't burn you. It's cold. C-O-L-D. It's cold. It's just an old coal a piece of coal that's been burned. And it may not burn me, but it's going to blacken me. And I want to tell you, the friendship of this world may not burn you to start with, but it will blacken your character. Hello. I want to say something here, and I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But in every church, I don't care how small it is, if it's six people or 600 or 6,000, in every church, there is a worldly element. Huh? In every church. Don't matter. Huh? But if you cater to that, and it ever gets to where it has influence, you'll never get that church turned around. An ounce of prevention's worth a pound of cure. Hey, man. Somebody say amen now. Ah, hey, in every church there is a world. You mean, Brother Savage, there's a worldly element in this church? Yeah. Don't ask me who it is because I ain't going to tell you. And if you're waiting on me to tell you, you'll never know. But if you got in a spiritual sense at all, hey man, you can tell. Come on here. Hey man, when somebody is, can I say it like this, worldly minded? It don't, come on here, don't take much to keep them out of God's house. It don't take much to keep them from praying. Amen. Anything, come on here, that keeps you away from the revival. Amen. And the Holy Ghost move of the Spirit is not good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. I remember, and, and this has been many years ago now, and some of y'all heard me tell it. Uh, many years ago, my brother lived down to uh, Fairfax Station down here uh, off of Pope's Head Road. And uh, uh, I was, we were living in Texas at the time. And and uh, he uh, he called me and he knew I was coming. I was coming to preach Brother Wayne Powers a revival meeting when Brother Wayne was at Springfield down there. And uh, most of y'all don't even remember those years. You weren't even around. But uh, he's had a church down there, and we was coming from Texas to preach him a revival. And my brother asked me if I'd bring him some of my birds that I had. He wanted to get started in uh, racing homing pigeons, and I said, sure. Amen. I, fi- I picked out five birds, amen, three young ones and, and, and two older birds and brought with me and uh, give them to Owen. And, amen. And, uh, ah, Man, he was proud to have those birds. I didn't, I didn't bring him no culls. I brought him the best of the flock. 
I brought him birds that had pedigrees. Amen. They were purebred. They were thoroughbred. Amen. Amen. The mom and dad bird that I brought. Amen. The young ones had never been on a flight before. At least not a long flight, but those that mom and daddy had been. They knew how to fly home. Amen. And I said, now, Owen, I'm telling you, don't let those birds out. If you let them out, they will be gone back to Texas. Amen. I said, don't let them out. Whatever you do, amen, you'll be missing five birds. Amen. He uh, he said, okay. And and so he went to work one day, and, and Francis went to work one day, and uh, all their kids went to school one day, and they had some of their kin folks visiting from New Jersey down uh, to be and being with them for a while, and and those uh, those kids from New Jersey, curious as children are, Amen. They went down to look at the birds in the pen, Amen. And so when they went down there, Amen. They 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 just happened to leave the door open when they went inside the pen. Amen. I'm going to teach you all some pigeon talk tonight. Praise God. And, and, and when those kids went in the pen and they left the door open, amen, those birds looked at each other and said, you see what I see? Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. And before those children could get that door shut, all five birds flew out that doorway. Amen. And that was the morning that we were leaving. And this was very, very early in the morning. Amen. And we were leaving that day going home. Amen. And uh, ah, when those birds got out, those birds always make two or three circles around and around before they strike out. They don't just fly out the coop and start off. Amen. They fly around and around and they get their bearings. Amen. I've read several articles. Amen. How they can do that. Hey, there's a magnetic field inside of them that God put there. Amen. One writer said it was in the craw or their, their throats. Another one said it was in their head. Amen. Regardless, God put it there and tell them which way is home. Amen. And they make several circles around. Amen. And after a while, they come around the second time. And I can see that older bird say, ah, there it is. Amen. What, what did you, what did you hear? What did you see? What did you feel? Amen. Amen. And he said, I felt the signal. And they went around another time or two. And directly, amen, the lead bird said, I know where home is. And they took out across the West Virginia mountains. Amen. Come on, y'all stay with me. It was 1,200 miles home to Texas by the way we drive, but those birds don't have to go that way. Hey, man, they cried across country, and they flew all the way home. Hey, man, and when I got home, my next-door neighbor said, I saw your birds come in just about dark. Hey, man, yesterday evening they beat me home. Hey, somebody said they can only fly 50 miles an hour. Hey, man, I know better. Hey, man, they can fly. Fly faster than that. I've had them to fly 80 and 90, amen, some miles an hour. I want to tell you, if you want to get home bad enough, and you want to go to heaven bad enough, amen, you won't stop, amen, until you get to where you want to go. Whatever you have to do, whatever you have to give up, whatever you have to leave behind, amen, I'm going to heaven. Amen, live, die, sink, or swim, good or bad, sunshine or rain, worldliness or no worldliness, I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. Woo! I can see those birds. Now, homing birds don't, don't fly treetop tall. They get up, amen, way up there. Amen. They fly higher, amen, than common birds. And when they're flying over West Virginia, West Virginia mountains are pretty to look at, but they're dangerous flying around because there's downdrafts and there's updrafts. Some friends of ours that used to be uh, uh, fly airplanes in Richlands, Virginia, Sister Savage will remember Pete 
what's his name, Richardson. Amen. And some of his friends was flying. Amen. One night and and somehow or another, don't know what happened even yet today. Amen. They were in their private plane, two engine plane and several, what was it, five or six men in there. Hey, five, I believe. Amen. And, and they were going home, but for some reason, Amen. They couldn't land when they first got there, so they made a circle or so around. Amen. And they got in one of those downdrafts. Amen. In the edge of the mountain. Amen. Over close to, uh, Amen. What's the name of that town before you get to? No, it was this side of Claypool Hill. Uh, yeah, it's close to pounding milk, but anyhow, hey amen, there's one real high mountain on the left-hand side of that highway. And for some reason, the drown draft from that, hey amen, mountain range pulled them down into the mountain. And all five men lost their life. Hey amen, we were there in revival meeting when that happened years ago. Hey amen, and, and uh, another pilot t- told us one day, said, Whatever you do, hey amen, when you're in the mountain range, you fly high. Because those down drafts and up drafts, hey amen, will, will suck you into a chamber that you can't pull out of. And I want to tell you, so it is in life. When you're going to heaven, hey amen, don't fly so low that the world has an attraction and a pull on you. If you are flying, come on here, hey amen, to where the pleasures of this world are pulling at you. Hey amen, you're flying too low. You need to get up higher. Hey amen, fly high, children. Amen. Don't let the world, amen, suck you down to destruction. Amen. Say, amen, homing pigeons, stir blitz, fly high. Amen. Get above this world. Get above its attractions. Get above its pleasures. Amen. The word doesn't appeal to you. I know we're living in a generation that don't understand that term. And that's the reason they wear these redskins hats. And they may not go to their ball game, but they root for them on the radio. You're in a downdraft. Come on here. That downward pull is sucking the life out of you and you'll become a has been and a used to be if you don't get up higher fly high somebody say amen ah ah, brother I want to tell you amen I can see those birds in my mind as they're able to fly high enough that the West Virginia downdrafts and updrafts don't affect them. But somewhere down the line, hey man, they get over top of, uh, 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 of Tennessee and those beautiful farms down there that's got tall silos and beautiful barns. And hey man, is they're flying high. Hey man, come on, y'all stay with me. Hey man, there, there's common birds. Hey man, on the roof of the silo. Hey man, and on the roof of that barn. Hey man, and those common birds are looking up and all of them birds are flying off a of high. Hey man, I've heard people say, hey man, I, that some people are so spiritual minded, they're no earthly good. That is not true. Hey man, that's a false concept. The truth is, the more heavenly minded you get, the more earthly good you are. Hey man, fly high, saints. Don't let the world appeal to you. Amen. And coming over those barns, those coming birds, look up, man. Man, look at them birds are flying. I wonder where their home is. And I can see one or two of those birds fly off the silo. Amen. And fly up. Amen. Come on, come on, come on here. Amen. And say to those high flying home and racing home and pigeons, Hey, y'all need to come down to our barn. Amen. We got some pretty chicks down there that would love to see you. Hey, hey, I want to tell you, the friendship of the world is enmity with God. You've got to get higher than that. 
Amen. You've got to fly high enough that this world has no attraction to you. Amen. And no pull. Amen. Where you going there, high flyer? Amen. I'm going home. Amen. I got home on my mind. Amen. Oh, why don't you come on down with the rest of us? See that? Amen. Barn down there. We got a hay loft that's full of hay. Amen. And you can nest there. And you can have uh, uh, all the other bird friends that you want. Uh, amen. But I can see that veteran bird say, uh-uh. Amen. We're, come on here, we are thoroughbreds. We're not common birds. We're on our way home. We haven't got time to come down to the worldly pleasures and the common things of this world. I want to tell you, friend of mine, amen, don't let the world entice you into their trap. Amen, it'll destroy your spirituality. Somebody said, well, I know people in other churches that Go to ball games. Races. Come on here. Bowling alleys. Skating rinks. We got to have a little fun. Woo! Help me, Lord. I'm in trouble here tonight. But I want to tell you, you cannot afford to come down. The world always wants you to come down. You folks live too high. You folks live too separate. You folks live too... Hey, man, you don't have to live that way to get to heaven. Hey, man, you don't go by what other people say. Hey, man, you go by what the book says. And there's something inside of me that's beating and says, Home this way. Home. I'm going home. Hey, man, I don't care. Come on. Are you all still with me? Say amen. Remember years ago I read an old Grecian fable, amen, when uh, it said when Ulysses sailed past the island of the Cyrenes, he listened for a moment to the sorcerer's music. The sorcerer's music, headhunters, if you will, amen, that eat human beings. They were on the shore, and they were beating their drums and playing their music and their uh, trances, amen. And, 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 amen, Ulysses, amen, didn't want to go in there, didn't really, amen, he wanted to go to his destination, Amen. And he stuffed the ears of his crew, amen, with something, some kind of wax to keep them from hearing, amen, the pull of the sorcerer, amen, and he himself tied himself, amen, to the mask pole that held up the sails and said, I will not go near, amen, the, the island of those headhunters, amen. And he tied himself to the mast, and thus he passed by in safety. Amen, that fatal strand of hun- head hunters and amen, human eaters. Amen, and he made his trail safely. But there was another man that sailed in another ship. His name was Orphus, in search of the golden fleece. He went by the same coast. Amen. But he being a master musician himself, amen, he took out his instrument and he set up better music than that of the Cyrenians. Amen. And he so enchanted his crew with his own music and sweet melodies. Amen. Without the use of wax in their ears or ropes to the mast. Amen. They sailed safely past and went on to their destination. I want to tell you, praise God, we got better music. Hallelujah. We got sweeter tunes. We got better my melodies. Amen. And come on, come on here. Amen. And if Hank Williams is a pull on you, why don't you come on, come on here. Amen. Why don't you get out a song of, sung by the Bly family. Amen. And put it in there and sing until the music of heaven fills your soul. And Hank Williams ain't even got nothing close to it. I want to tell you, what is it? It's the sweet Holy Ghost uh, that's singing in your heart. When I first got saved, 
I don't know what y'all going to do with this. When I first got saved as a boy, teenage boy, I loved, I loved, in those days they called it hillbilly music. Now it's got a better term. They call it country western music. It's all the same bunch. Yeah, thank you. And when I first got saved, I loved that stuff. Man, I knew all of those songs by heart. I mean, I didn't dare sing them around Daddy. He had to give me a different tune. <sighs> hey, man, and, and them old songs beat me mama with a salad fork and shoe fly pie. Hey, man, you got to be old to remember them songs. Hey, man, and shotgun boogie. Woo! How the feathers flew. Hey, man, ah, I loved those old songs and could sing them and did sing them. But when I got saved, I was still going to public school. They had no Christian school in those days. I was, I was going to public school and I was riding my bicycle about four or five blocks. Hey, man, every day to school and, and back home. And, and I'd come home at dinner time, riding my bicycle home at dinner time. Mama would have a sandwich or something ready for us to eat and get on that little bicycle, 24 inch. Hey, man, bicycle small, but I was a small fella. Hey, man, and I'd, I'd, I'd ride it all the way back to school. Hey man, and on the way back to school, that old song. Hey man, come on, y'all still with me now? Hey man, that old song oh, started going over in my mind. Hey man, I wasn't singing out loud, but it was in my mind. Come on here, shotgun boogie. Amen. And I knew every word of it. Philip, don't you go hunting for that son. It's too old. Amen. Ah, praise God. And, and that song was going over and over in my mind. And about a block and a half from the house, I stopped my little 24 inch bicycle. I got off. I put the kickstand down and I said, devil, you get out of my mind. Hey, man, I got saved last night. Praise God, and I don't want no more of your trash. Praise God, and I got back on my bicycle and pedaled on to school, and I sang Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me all the way to school. And from that day to this, I've never been enticed. Amen with the worldly music. How come? Amen. Glory to God, I got a better song. I got better instruments. I got better music. I got a better melody. I'm going to heaven when I die. Somewhere down in Arkansas, in eastern Arkansas, if you've been through that country, you understand. On each side of the interstate, of course, it wasn't interstate way back then. I forget the name of the highway I'm wanting to say is US 30 or whatever, US 70. He meant going from Memphis down to Texarkana. And on each side of the road, he meant there's rice paddies, rice fields. Just that whole country was full of rice fields. And when those high flying birds, he meant got over those rice paddies, those young birds, Hey man, uh, come on, y'all stay with me. Hey man, said, can't we just take a break? Hey man, I'm starving to death. You never get young people full. I don't care how much you feed them. And those young birds said, we're, we're hungry. Hey man, just give us five minutes. Let us go down to those rice fields. Hey man, and eat. Ah, and that old veteran said, we'll never go down to those rice paddies. We are thoroughbreds. We are going home. If you go down to those rice paddies, hey man, come on here. A hawk's going to get you. Hey man, or a varmint's going to get you. Hey man, a cat will sneak up on you. Hey, hey man, I want to tell you, hey man, we're going home, saints of God. We don't have time time to come down. We don't have time. We're building a wall. 
Amen. Amen. The wise man said, we're building a wall and we don't have time to come down. Hallelujah. Western Arkansas, somewhere down close to Texarkana, those hills are now getting bigger and trees are larger. And in the limbs of those trees is the arch enemy, amen, of the pigeon called a hawk. Amen, a hawk will get them. Now I'm telling you, I've seen a hawk get behind those birds Amen. Until he drives them to the ground in his claws. Amen. Goes through their bodies. Amen. And he's got his supper. And in those leaves of that tree, amen, that hawk looks up and he said, I'll have my dinner for my nest tonight. Amen. He lurches out of that. Come on, y'all stay with me. He lurches out of the limbs of those trees. And he goes and flies above those, amen, uh, racing homing pigeons. And he gets above them, amen, to where they're not noticing. But did you know that the Bible tells us that we are not ignorant concerning the devices of the devil? Amen. If he can't get you to come down to the silo, and if he can't get to da- you in the downdraft or updraft, if he don't get you from, from the rice paddies, amen, directly he'll, he'll bring Bring something your way, amen, that you don't even know it's the devil, but it's still the devil. And he flies high and gets between the sun and those birds, amen, and directly he makes his plunge. Are y'all still with me? I can see, come on, come on here. I can see that veteran bird as he looks over to his co-pilot and he says, take over. Amen, we got company. Praise God, isn't it wonderful to have pigeon language? Amen. Amen, take over and keep flying. Amen. Now, I've seen this happen. Amen, when a hawk gets out the bird, amen, one of those racing homers, he'll make all kind of twists and turns and upside down and crooked. Amen, look like a cork screw going down. Amen. Directly he's up and then he's down. Amen. He's up. Praise God. And that old hawk. Amen. Gets behind that old veteran bird and that old veteran bird says, wait till he gets almost on him. Amen. And he makes a dive for the ground. And when he gets come on here, when he gets in about five feet of the ground, that master bird, praise God, will take an upward swing. Amen. And directly, amen, that old hawk hits the ground and don't know what happened to him? Where did that be- breakfast or supper go? I want to tell you, we are not ignorant concerning the devices of the devil. Amen. Keep your eyes open. Stay spiritual. Keep your eyes upon the goal that we're going to heaven after a while. No, I'm not going to be enticed. And no, the devil is not going to get me. Amen. By the time he's after me, amen, I'm going to swing higher. Amen. Woo! Somebody say amen. First John 3 and 3, Whosoever hath this hope in himself purifies himself even as he is pure. I'm almost got you home. Amen. You still got plenty of CD back there, brother? Hey, man. Hey, he's got the same CD on yet. Ah, praise God. The closer they get to home, Texarkana is 200 miles from home. 200 miles is closer than 1,200. Hey, man, when they get down somewhere around Longview, which is about a little, little more than halfway from Texarkana to Dallas, Amen. Where my, my loft was. Amen. And when they get down there, Amen. Those young birds have never been on a long flight like this. They flew around a little, but never on a long flight like this. They've never had, come on here. They never had to fast breakfast, dinner, and supper. Amen. They might have done without a meal or two, but they've never fasted like this fast. They flew and they flew. 
And those younger birds, amen, said, hey, amen, we getting tired. We can't fly any further. Amen, we're going to have to give up. Amen, we, our wings won't flap anymore. Amen, and I see that daddy bird drop back in formation. Amen, and he, he looks over at that young youngin. Amen, and he said, listen to me. I know your daddy. I know your mama. I know your grandparents. You are a thoroughbred. Amen, and thoroughbreds don't quit. Amen, just because you're tired. Amen, you keep flapping your wings. Amen, I want to tell you, there has been several times that I've been tired. Amen, but I'm a thoroughbred. Hallelujah, and I got up, and I flapped my wings again, and I decided I'm going to heaven by the help and grace of God. Show me your bloodline. You are not just another common bird. And the first thing you know, those young birds felt me strength. In my weakness am I made strong. Amen. I said, Amen. I remember, uh, how many of y'all remember Paul Harvey? Does anybody here remember Paul Harvey? Oh, what a news commentator he was. He's probably one of the best I ever, amen, uh, heard. Amen. And some say he is a Christian. I never met him. But I heard him an awful lot of times on on his uh, uh, little program, and he'd always tell you, now for the rest of the story. He said there was a hey man loft in, uh, in France that had some wonderful, wonderful birds, thoroughbreds. Hey man, and, and a man in Spain, hey man, heard about his good birds and what great flyers they were and he drove all the way from the southern part of the Spain amen to France to where his loft was to understand if I remember correctly Paul Harvey said it is 1200 miles amen and he bought this pair of birds amen and he took them all the way back to Spain and somehow or another the, that pair of birds got out and they flew all the way back to their original loft in France. Amen. Uh, now, amen, Paul Harvey said, now for the rest of the story. He's always got something good to say. He said the daddy bird of that pair of birds, amen, was, uh, was stolen out of its loft in France and carried 60 miles away. Amen. And whoever stole that daddy bird, amen, thoroughbred, purebred, amen, they cut both wing feathers to where it was impossible for that bird to fly. Amen. But that bird got out one day and he walked 60 miles, amen, back to his original home. Praise God. I wondered how he got across the river. I've wondered, are y'all still here? I wondered how he escaped the hawks. I wondered how he escaped the cats. I wonder how he got past all, amen, the varmints that would devour him. Amen. I don't know how he got away from the foxes. Amen. But he walked, amen, 60 miles through dangerous territory to him. Amen. To get back home. Amen. I want to tell you, great God. Amen. I've been through some dangerous territories in my life. But I'm going home. My wings clipped several times. Hey man, and I couldn't fly. Hey man, ha. Hey man, home and thoroughbreds are always used to flying. They don't know how to get anywhere without flying. Hey man, but if the devil clips your wings, say I'm going to heaven. No matter what comes or goes, I'll walk if I have to. I'll crawl if I have to. Hey man, I'll live right. Whatever the cost may be, I'm going home. I got to close. When uh, I had my loft back there in Texas, we'd have to take our birds on a flight sometime, and they'd be hundreds of miles away. And by the way, I got 
my oldest son, Ricky, he's got into racing homing pigeons now, and he's into it in a big way. I mean, he ships birds all over the country. Ah, but I had taken my birds on a long trip. I forget how many hundred miles it was now. Hey, Amen. And I waited for them to get home. Ah, hey, Amen. And I watched, and I waited, and I watched, and I waited. And after a long period of time, hey, Amen, I saw them come in to the landing. Hey, Amen. Instead of landing, they circled. They never do that. Something's wrong. Something ain't right. Hey, Amen. And they circled again. They came by the landing plank, but they didn't land, and they flew around again. And after a while, hey, Amen, I watched. They had had their legs and the feet. You know, they when they fly, they put their legs and the feet up into their feathers. Hey, Amen. To where they won't have any drag on them. And they had been in flight so long and so far, they couldn't get their landing gear down. They had cramped legs. Amen. And, 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 and just a little bit. Amen. I saw one of them come in on, on, on a, a belly land. He landed on the plank and slid through the barbs. Amen. And down on the ground. And he could not get up because his landing gear, amen, has cramped up into his feathers. I went into the, hey, man, the barn, the, the pen there, and I reached down and picked up that bird, and very carefully, hey, man, I got a hold of its legs and its feet, and carefully pulled them out, hey, man, from his feathers, and massaged them until they got circulation and could stand again. But that bird wanted to get home. Hallelujah. He knew, amen, that at home, amen, there was water. And at home, there was feed. And at home was his mate. And at home, everything he wanted in life was there. I tell you what, hey man, there's been a few times I've had leg cramps and didn't feel like getting up and preaching again. But somehow another God, by his divine providence, hey man, came along with the Holy Ghost. And I felt a surge. And I felt a massaging. And I felt a life. Hey man, and I said, I can go another day's journey. My friends, don't give up whatever you do let's go on for God if you can get home after a while there's rest and there's a nest in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you but I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And the way where I go, you know, and the way I know. Amen. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. If you make a few circles around the spiritual, amen, sanctuary of God, amen, and something inside of you will say, this way. This way, this is the way. Walk ye in it and you shall find rest for your soul. Amen. You'll have a better life after a while than this world has got to offer you. Amen. Let's go to heaven no matter what the cost may be for your life. Lord, we thank you for your blessed presence. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. The gracious, gracious presence. Oh, God, I pray that you'll give your children tonight greater determination and commitments to serve you and live a life of holiness. And let the world play their tune. God, we got better music to listen to than the world's ever had. Breathe upon your people tonight. Give us that determination. We're going home no matter what the cost may be. In Christ's name we pray. Hallelujah. Everybody stand. Glory to God. I want to go to heaven tonight.
How about you? It's not always an easy road. It's not always an e- a pleasant flight. But you have to come to the place. No matter what mom and daddy does, I'm going to heaven. No matter what my children do, I'm going to heaven. Somebody say amen. No matter what anybody else says, if my dear friends say it's all right to go here or there, and something inside of you says, I need to be in church. I need to go to God's house. What are you going to follow? The whims of this world will pull at your soul. But my Lord, we got a better world waiting on us after a while. Come on, let's pray.